On the same manner, you can use either blur or smug, smudge, you know, to kind of blur the edges if you want to make it. If you say, oh well, I made I made it a little bit too um, too hard there, you know, I wanted to blend a little bit more. You can always go back and you know blur the edges. Um, this is, uh, you know, just just a basic. Uh, you know, you will have to move around the model and do the back too. You know, on the face, you can do a similar uh, process. You know, of working with with the brush. You know, maybe darkening the the area for the eyelids. And uh, I would suggest just suggest for the face, make it even more. You know, the opacity even even smaller. You know, maybe the cheeks, you know, the area underneath the nose that doesn't get as much darkness, you know, maybe the ears on the inside, maybe the ba the, the bottom, not that part, but the bottom of the neck where the, the sun doesn't really go, you know, directly exposure because uh, the head is always above. So you could, you know, start darkening areas that you think are darker. Oop, I lost my selection there. And the same way you can, uh, you know, paint the lips if you want it, you know, make them uh, maybe darker. Since he's a male, we don't want to give him pink lips. Uh, you know, you can make the brush smaller. And because I have opacity, because I have uh, the you know the opacity there, if the more the more times you click on it, the darker you make the stroke. Notice how dark, much darker it gets. That's the beauty about working with opacity that you can always work in what we call passes. You know, like layered versions. You know of it. So keep work. You keep working on this guy, and once you have the you know the skin worked out in the, you know different ways that 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 just highlights you know gets rid of that simple even look on the model that's what we're aiming for here and uh, you know like the examples that I posted in the classroom that you can see different tonal variations on the color so once you finish um, this just saved a um, a, um, a map okay so here but down here on the load save settings um, Oh, no, not there, hold on. Sorry, not not over here. This is not what we were looking for. Uh, it's over here, layers dialog. Um, you're gonna see a little layer there that is kind of like Photoshop, right? It looks, it looks very much like that. You can duplicate, add a new layer, or delete layer. But from the menu, you know, you can, you know, work on on the, maybe if you want to leave the base color um, as the base color and not paint on it, like painting layers like you would do in Photoshop, you add a new layer and you paint the highlights, let's say that these highlights, you could paint them here, and then leave the background as the base color, okay? That way uh, you can make changes a little bit easier, okay? And you can do opacity in the layer like you do in Photoshop, which is uh, amazing. Okay, you have uh, different filters there that you can play with, you know, blur, sharpen, uh, just like in Photoshop, you know, blurring, uh, making edges clear. Um, once you're finished, you go file, save, bitmap, and you can flatten it so that you have one single map for that paint color, okay? Uh, before you do that, make sure that you save your file in 3D Studio Max so that if you want to come back and recover everything you can always come back you know on flatten things uh, here on tiff instead of tiff you can you know use the the color and let me find the folder that we created that was uh, a different one here viewport paint textures was that it i believe so uh, and then we call it um, diffuse character diffuse map you say save, and you have your uh, your map saved. And then now, if we go to the material editor, okay. Once you're going to notice that once you click this off, you know you might might or might not lose. It depends on the the work uh, process.